uh, hi guys uh, welcome to my channel for another video uh, if you have not seen my previous video so please check the description and click on the link to uh, see the video hi friends uh, in our previous video we did able to build a function which allow user to update an order from in process to shipped right uh, in this video, we'll go ahead and implement a function which allow admin to cancel an order and issue refund to user, okay? So to do that, uh, we have to store a strike session and then the payment intent information when user doing the checkout, right? Uh, let me tell you what I mean. Uh, let's say I'm gonna open my database here, right? So if we check one of our order, let me open food estates db database and we have the order here right so when user submitting an order right uh we need to store the session id and then the payment intent id from uh stripe right so then we can store it here so when admin uh click to cancel order right uh it will hit our database and then we'll load the order uh, id and from that order id uh, we can get the information about the session of Stripe and then the payment intent ID. And we can send this to uh, Stripe again for refund the issue for that order, okay? So we do not have these two columns over here, you can see. So what we have to do, we have to add these two columns over here, right? And then update our database again. So let's go back to our Visual Studio, okay? Uh, make it bigger, click on stop. Use our order header class. So here you can see our model class and uh, open this file and then here what we're going to do we'll go ahead and create a uh, two more entry which allow us to add two column to our order header table just copy these two okay and paste it here just change the name to a stripe session id and then this one i'll put a stripe payment intent id okay so now we'll go ahead and update our database okay before we update our database we also need to update this one here you can see this is saying required we do not want required here okay i'll make it as nullable now go to your package manager console and then select database access here add migration info to order header enter so here you can see we had three changes and you can see these three changes one is for this one the date of shift column and then the two new column over here and now you click on update database now you type here update database hit enter so let's go back to our database here let's right click on here you can see we do not have the updated info yet so we have to connect and reconnect again okay so do refresh, go over here, go to food stage DB, click on table, open order headers. So here you can see we do have new column that we just updated here, right? The Stripe payment intent and the Stripe session. So when user requesting to submit an order, right? During the payment process time, we need to also store a Stripe session ID and then the Stripe payment ID here. So then if admin want to cancel this order, right? Uh, we can get the session ID and then the payment ID here to issue refund from a Stripe. So let's go back to our Visual Studio and then we need to edit our summary function from order controller. So if you come to our order controller here, we have summary function. Here we are creating the session, right? And then here we'll go ahead and update the uh, session ID to our uh, database. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the order ID from uh, our order header table, which was created here. You can see we created this uh, order summary here, right? So we'll go ahead and get that order again and load it here. Dot first or default. Here I go. You post you dot ID equal equal. And we have order header ID here. You can see, just get it from here. Paste it here, okay. Now we have the order from our database. And then we'll go ahead and store the Stripe payment session ID equal to 
here we have session as a session dot id right and then here we'll do load new order dot stripe payment intent id which is dot payment intent id okay and then here we'll go ahead and update our order table and save it okay so we are good over here so let's say after order success right we also need to go to this function to store our payment id after the success order so this is our order success function here right uh, so here you can see uh, we do not want to hard code it like this so just remove this go to our utility folder here right we have update order status over here so i was going to use this one go to controller again so here i'll type so inside this uh, if condition we'll go ahead and create a service okay equal to new session service okay and then here i'll type session service dot get here we'll take order process right dot stripe session id so we'll get the stripe session id from our order table and then once we do that right here we'll take if session dot payment payment status dot to lower equal equal paid uh copy this two line here put it inside of this remove this two line okay and here we'll go ahead and change it to here we'll change it to update order status copy this paste it here change it to payment status paid okay and then here so here also put update order status dot payment status paid right and now we also need to update the payment intent for strike payment okay so you here you type order processed dot payment strike payment intent id equal to which we are getting from a stripe session dot payment intent id okay so now we do have our uh, session id and also the payment in intent id to our uh, database so here we also do not need this okay here i can type http context dot session dot clear all right so uh, we added the new column and also we are updating the info of the strike payment uh, during the process of payment so now i uh, will go back to our order controller here right i'll go ahead and copy this one right here okay and paste it here after you paste it here right change the function name to cancelled and we're going to have a parameter here uh, this should be order id when admin click on that cancel button right it will also pass the uh, id to our function okay uh, so since we have a order id here right so we're not going to use this one over here right i'll go ahead and use order id uh, so here we loaded the order from our order header table right so now we need to go ahead and check if there is an order with this order id if it is there then we'll go in there write the order to update dot order status we'll go change later but let's create a uh, refund session for stripe here okay so here i'll type refund create options here reason equal to refund reasons dot request by customer and then here i type payment payment intent equal to order to update dot strap payment intent id okay uh, here it should be create not cancel okay so now you do see we 
there is no error here okay so once we create it right i will go ahead and create a service now var service equal to new refund service okay and then refund equal to refund service dot create options here you do order to update dot order status equal to update order status dot cancel order to update dot payment status equal to here it should be refunded let's go to our update order status we'll go ahead and create another property here copy it paste it here and then type payment status equal to refunded and then this should be refunded let's go back to our order controller again refunded all right so here we did so here we did update the order status to cancel and then payment status to refund it and remove this line we do not need this line over here right and then uh here we already issued the refund right from stripe and then we are updating our database but here uh, one little thing i want to do i will have another e condition over here okay and then i will take um if the order to update dot payment status update order status dot payment status equal to paid let's create this if condition and put everything under this if condition and here we are updating our order uh, so friends also change this thing from here because we are not using our order details b model so remove this just put this thing here all right so we'll go ahead and also change one more thing over here if you go up to our order success right and here you see we did to lower make sure we convert this string to lower here okay so let's go back to our cancel function so here what we did we lowered our order over here right and then we're checking if this order is not null right and then here we are checking if the if this order was paid or not if if it was paid right we'll go in there and then uh, issue a refund and after that we will go ahead and save our database and then here we'll go ahead pass the order id to order detail base okay and so let's go to our order detail base and then here i'll go to our cancel section right this is our cancel section right so here i'm not gonna have a button i'm gonna have anchor link over here and then here i'll type asp action equal to cancelled and then asp controller equal to order and then here i'll put asp route I type here order ID equal to copy this paste it here dot ID so now uh, let's go ahead copy this line up to here put an end sign over here paste it here equal equal not equal to cancel so we only will so we only will display this anchor if the order status not equal to completed and order status not equal to cancelled and then go all the down here and here we'll go ahead and copy this whole thing put the or sign paste it here change this to cancel as well so what we are doing over here we will only show this button if the order status is completed or the order status is cancelled and this button will be disabled and also if you go up here you can see i did add this to div here to show the current payment status and then to show the order status right so click on save run this project I will use customer one Gmail account to sign in. Submit. So here I will go ahead and add few items to our cart. So I did add these three items. Let me show you my database currently. 
this is our order header table executing it and you would see we do not have any order with the stripe payment id and then the stripe session okay so let's go back there again click on the cart make it bigger submit the order filling out here okay it's 29.98 click on submit we are now on our stripe page click on pay So our payment got processed. Let me open my database again. Click on execute. So you do see our new payment, right? And then here you can see the Stripe payment ID and then the Stripe session ID, right? So if I open my Stripe payment page, right? Let me show you. So here, let's do refresh. This is the recent order we just had paid, right? And you can see the uh, payment ID which is XGZS, right? Let me open database again, and you can see XGZS for our payment intern ID, okay? So let's go to our website again, click on order history. So this customer only will able to see his order. So this, he can see current status is pending. He can click on view details, but you see he cannot do anything because he's not admin. So now we'll go ahead and sign out from here. Uh, let's sign in as the admin now. I'll go use my admin account here to sign in. Submit. Let's click on order history. I uh, will go ahead and check the recent order which was submitted by this customer. I'll go click on view details. So here you can see I cannot type anything because the current order status is pending, right? As the admin, I can go ahead and update the order. I'm clicking on here to update the order. So you can see my order status is now in process. But if I click on here, it will uh, update my order to shit, right? So let's go ahead and uh, click on it. Uh, you do see we did not put the tracking number and then the carrier uh, ID here. So it will not allow us to update our uh, order status. So click OK. Uh, if you have not seen this video, please go ahead and check my previous video. I have explained everything how we did uh, use this to show this alert and also the functionality to how to update order status to sheet. So click on OK. Put a carrier ID here and then the tracking number. Uh, let's do update it. So now you can see we did update the order and you can see the order status here. I will go ahead and cancel this order to issue refund for this customer, okay? So click on cancel order. So you can see it did call our cancel function over here with the order ID. You can see the order ID is 1034. So we are going inside of our uh, if condition because there is an order with that ID and it loaded here, right? So it's checking if the payment status is paid then we'll go ahead and uh, create a refund uh, option. So here we are creating a refund of option from a Stripe, right? So also we are creating the service to issue the refund. So here we complete our refund and then we are updating our order status to cancel and payment status to uh, refund. Let me go ahead and click on continue again. Uh, here you can see with the updated information for this order, right? Uh, we payment status is refunded and then the order status is canceled. Let's go ahead and uh, check our Stripe payment page here again. So here, if I click on refund over here, so you can see 2998 uh, for this payment XZZS, right, has been refunded. If I open my database again, click execute, and the last order that we did for this customer, which we issue refund to cancel the order. So you can see the order status is canceled, refunded, right? And then this is the Stripe information for this order, okay? So let us let me open here. So friends, we have done uh, cancel functionality here, right? But uh, if I open another order here, let me open this order, right? So let's say if admin click on cancel by mistakely, it will cancel the order, right? I want to create an alert here when user click on cancel order, the alert would show if user really want to cancel this order or not. If they click yes, that means it will uh, issue refund for the customer. If they click no, then this cancel uh, request will be canceled. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, build this in our next video. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next tutorial. Please do share, like, and subscribe the channel. Thank you. Bye.